Stories of encounters with extraterrestrials go back centuries and span the globe. We're fascinated by the idea that we aren't alone in the universe, and that whatever is out there is as curious of us as we are of them. While many stories about alien abductions can be explained away as hallucinations or sleep paralysis, there are some stories that make you think twice. One such story occurred to four friends in the Allagash Wilderness of Maine in 1976. They reported having a strange encounter with an unidentified flying object and eventually would recall being abducted and experimented on. Is their story proof that we're being watched by beings from another world? On August 1976, twin brothers Jack and Jim Weiner, along with their friends Charlie Foltz and Chuck Rack, were out on a camping trip. All four of the friends were students at the Massachusetts College of Art and were looking forward to a weekend of fishing. The area they chose to camp in is known as the Allagash Waterway, a 92-mile long network of canals and lakes in the remote wilderness of Maine. On the first night of the trip, the four friends shared a campsite with another group who informed them that they were searching for two teenage campers who had gone canoeing earlier in the day and hadn't reported back to camp. The night was pitch black and they were concerned that the boys had gotten lost. The friends decided to help the group search for the campers and while surveying the lake with binoculars, they spotted a bright light moving slowly in the sky above a nearby lake. They observed it for 30 seconds before the light went out the two teenage campers were found unharmed a little while later. The next evening, while canoeing in Eagle Lake, the same place where they had spotted the light the night before, the four friends decided to try night fishing. They built a large bonfire on their campsite to use as a landmark in case they got lost. While fishing, they noticed a large bright light in the sky, illuminating the forest below. It seemed to change color from red to green to yellow. It made no sound, but it seemed to be slowly approaching the group. When the undulating light was only around 100 yards away, Charlie shined an SOS signal at it with a flashlight to see if they would get a response. The sphere stopped moving immediately, and suddenly a beam of light emerged from near the bottom. In the blink of an eye, they were back near the shore of their campsite, and the sphere was only a couple of yards away. They stared at it in amazement, and once again Charlie shined an SOS signal with his flashlight. This time the sphere ascended into the sky and disappeared. It reappeared in the distance and then disappeared again, only to reappear even farther away before flying away altogether. They noticed that the large bonfire they'd built had been reduced to ashes, a process that would have taken several hours. The men were dazed and exhausted, so they went to sleep. The next morning, they talked about the strange sighting to a park ranger, and he speculated that the men had actually seen a searchlight shining from a distant hardware store that had opened recently. The men were skeptical that this was the case, since the store was far away and behind a mountain. A couple of years after the incident at the lake, Jim Weiner had an accidental fall that left him with brain damage and epilepsy. This is when the nightmare started. Jim would have recurring visions of being transported onto a ship through a beam of light and being examined by strange beings with long necks, large heads, and four fingers on each hand. While the other three men sat and watched, unable to intervene, the beings used a plethora of tools on Jim's body. He described feeling terrified, the procedures were painful and invasive. The beings even took samples of blood, feces, and sperm. When he confided in his brother about these visions, Jack told him that he had been having similar nightmares for years. Under hypnosis, all four men recounted identical stories about being experimented on by inhuman entities. Since all four of the men were artists, they also drew what they saw, and their drawings were very similar to each other. Many people were instantly dubious about their claims. For one thing, their memories about that night were recovered using hypnosis. 
Skeptics consider hypnosis to be unscientific and unreliable. Subjects can easily be influenced by the hypnotist and create false memories. Their story could have also have been a complete fabrication. For one, all of the men were artists who began to incorporate their alleged abduction experience into their work after the incident. It's possible their story was just a simple marketing gimmick to help sell their art. The men became minor celebrities because of their encounter, so it's likely that their art was sought after by UFO enthusiasts. Whether or not you believe their story, there's no doubt that it fascinates a lot of people because of our collective longing to feel like we're not alone in the universe. With at least 200 billion galaxies out there, it's more than likely that some form of life exists. But whether or not they visited us is still unknown. For now. If you like this video, please subscribe to Cryptic for more.